do people notice that their breathing is heavy? In fact, if a person breathes about 15 liters per minute, he would not or she would not tell that her or his breathing is heavy. Why? Because air is weightless and our breathing muscles, chest and diaphragm, they are very strong. During maximum exercise, we can breathe up to 150 liters per minute. Hence, sick people breathe only about 10% of their maximum capacity. Quite easy, just 10% of maximum capacity. So normally they would not notice. People usually tell that their breathing is heavy when it's 25 liters per minute or even more. But in health, we should breathe only about 3%, 4% of our maximum capacity. And in fact, as we can see here, Hatha Yoga people breathe almost nothing, just 1%, slightly more than 1% of maximum capacity which is possible during physical exercise. So now we have a paradox. How it is possible that sick people who breathe very heavy, they have little oxygen inside their body. Whereas healthy people who breathe little have much more oxygen. In order to understand this paradox, let us consider oxygen transport. When we take inhale, this volume of air is spread over our lungs. Our lung size is incredible. It's about half size of the tennis court and it's spread in very, very thin layer. So you can imagine there is very efficient oxygen exchange between gas in our lungs and blood. Our blood, after this process, is about 98% saturated with oxygen. Almost completely. So by heavy breathing, we can't get much more. But there is one gas that we remove during breathing. This gas is CO2, carbon dioxide. Now when people think about CO2, what is it? Do we need it? Most ordinary people tell that CO2 is toxic waste poisonous gas. I spoke with hundreds, thousands of people during lectures or just ordinary conversations. And I found that people believe that CO2 is not necessary for our health. Whereas medical people have totally opposite opinion. They know that if CO2 drops in our body about four times below the norm, below the medical norm, we are going to die in minutes. Medical people, when they ask how should we breathe at rest, they give the opposite answer. They tell we have to breathe very little. What is going to happen with a person who tries to do 100 fast and big breath in succession? <laughs> Heavy breathing for about one minute. The person is going to pass out, to faint. Why? Because of lack of oxygen in the brain. Let us look at results of this experiment. This is a typical study. There are many other studies with totally the same result. Here is we have normal breathing. This is the oxygen content in our brain. It is given here in colors. We have violet colors, blue colors which indicate low oxygenation. And on the right side we have yellow and red in rainbow. And these yellow and red colors indicate high oxygenation. Now, after one minute of hyperventilation, this is what is going on with our brain. In the study they found 40% reduction in oxygen availability just after one minute of hyperventilation. But if a sick person breathes not that heavy, but let's say 15 or 25 liters per minute, of course he would be somewhere in between. He would be already deficient in oxygen inside the brain. Now, why does it take place? And in order to understand that, we have to understand another thing. CO2 is exceptionally important for dilation of blood vessels. And what happens? When CO2 is normal, they are dilated, they are white. And when we hyperventilate, they get constricted. So here we write vasoconstrictive effects, meaning that low level of CO2, they call it hypocapnia, carbon dioxide deficiency. This is the main cause. Cerebral blood flow decreases 2% for every millimeter mercury decrease in CO2. Professor Newton, University of Southern California Medical Center. Hyperventilation syndrome, 2004. So what is the Bohr effect? This physiological law was discovered about 100 years ago. And now it can be found virtually in all medical and physiological textbooks. Students of first year, we usually know this law very well. How does it work? Imagine that I exercise with my muscle. And, but my blood travels everywhere. The question is, how does my blood know that oxygen must be released exactly at this site. So, then we can 
Think about other parameters. When I exercise, I burn carbohydrates. When I burn carbohydrates, there are two end products, water and CO2. Water does not affect rates of chemical reaction, but CO2 does. What happens? CO2 diffuses into blood, and then CO2 meets with hemoglobin or red blood cells, which carry oxygen. So CO2 comes to them and basically helps to release or punch out oxygen, so that oxygen can diffuse into the tissue, so that we can, can continue to exercise, while carbon dioxide is partially combined with blood, so that we can expel it out. Now we can think also another situation. What happens when we hyperventilate? When we hyperventilate, CO2 in the body can be 20, 30, or even 40 percent below the norm. And then our blood arrives at the same tissue, but there is less CO2. So oxygen would not be released as, effi as efficiently as it should be. So normally, when people hyperventilate, let's think about people with heart problems, diabetes, chronic fatigue, sleeping problems, many other, most asthmatics, cancer patients, they would complain about fatigue being tight. Why? Because oxygen is not released where it is required. The breathing is too heavy. Not only muscles, but all vital organs, brain, heart, kidneys, liver, large colon, small colon, they are all going to get less oxygen. CO2 is a factor of stability of our nervous system. What happens, nervous cells, they have certain threshold when they when we receive a signal from outside, this signal is going to be transmitted only if it is strong enough. So when we get a message, a real signal is transmitted. But when we hyperventilate, this threshold can get very, very low. And what happens, any small abnormality, disturbance, which can appear accidentally inside our nervous system, can create a big response, so that all of a sudden, any part of the nervous system can start to discharge. And because of that, CO2 is called tranquilizer and sedative of the brain. It makes us calm, reasonable, sensible. This is what Dr. Brown wrote more than 50 years ago about CO2. He analyzed more than 300 Western publications. Studies designed to determine the effects produced by hyperventilation on nerve and muscle have been consistent in their finding on increased irritability. Dr. Brown Physiological Effects of Hyperventilation Physiological Reviews 1953 There are literally dozens of studies who found the same result. Now, there are also more recent studies and we can get here a very nice phrase which really describes what heavy breathing does to our brain. Hyperventilation leads to spontaneous and asynchronous firing of cortical neurons. Published in the Experimental Brain Research, 1999. So they say about spontaneous and asynchronous firing. What does it mean? It means all of a sudden, any part of our nervous machinery can start to send signals without any relation to the reality. That means we can get something in our head from nowhere just because of heavy breathing. And we can imagine that this is the reason why people can get panic attacks sleeping problems. Think what is going on with the person who cannot fall asleep. There are thoughts all of a sudden appearing and the person cannot control them. Now what about depression? People who are violent, angry, have different phobias, addictions. Hence we can expect, and it is true, that it is known for more than 50 years in neurology, psychology and psychiatry, that virtually all problems related to these sciences, hyperventilation is a necessary background. Why? Because when we breathe heavy, first of all, we get less blood supply. CO2 is vasodilator, and we know this fact now. We get the suppressed bore effect, so oxygenation of the brain is further reduced. In addition to that, we have a huge destabilizing factor, which makes the whole nervous machinery abnormal. So that all of a sudden, in some electrical circuits of our brain, we can have spontaneous and asynchronous firing not in, in synchrony with our thinking and appearing all of a sudden. 